Hi, I'm Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm so excited to talk to you about Age of Innovation, the latest game in the Terra Mystica series. There's Terra Mystica, Gaia Project, Terra Nova, and now Age of Innovation. Here are some photos from the game that I played just last night with a few friends. We played a four-player game. It took around a little over three hours, including setup and some minor teaching, but a lot of the rules are the same as Terra Mystica. So I think this game would be actually very difficult to teach to someone who doesn't already know Terra Mystica or Gaia Project, but we already had that foundation. We played Terra Mystica and Gaia Project and Terra Nova quite a bit. So we were able to jump in with not too many rules added to the game. A lot of what this game does is it adds and tweaks little things about, uh, about Terra Mystica. Um, and so I'm going to mention some of those tweaks today. My favorite tweak, I was trying to decide which one it was my favorite, but I think my favorite is, and I don't have a good photo of it here, is that instead of just having a set faction mat, you actually have a, a kind of a player mat and you add a faction to it. So the player mats have minor asymmetry to them, and then the faction that you add to it also has asymmetry to it. I would say a little bit of stronger asymmetry on the faction tile itself. So it's one of my favorite mechanisms in games when you combine two different asymmetrical elements to create way more combinations, way more possible combinations. So last night I played as the forest felines. The forest is associated with the green, so the player mats are all associated with a specific type of landscape so that each player is a different color um, associated with the, the terrain that they're going after on the, on the board. And then I was the felines, which had a unique power whenever I completed a city, and they had some unique starting resources. So I love asymmetric pairings. I love that they added that to Age of Innovation. In addition to this, they, some other little tweaks they added that I thought were really clever. One on the tracks that were previously called the cult tracks. I think they're called like the innovation tracks or something like that now. Um, the, the tracks have changed a little bit. They're, they're very similar, but they the, the one change that I really liked is that on row nine, you can't really see it in the photo here, but on row nine, each of the columns adds income. Uh, from then on, if you reach that, uh, that section, row nine or above, you get special income from then on. And that felt really good because now, now not only are you getting power as you move up the tracks, not only are you moving towards end game majority, um, there's the keys on the track still, but you're also moving towards income, increased income, and the income is paired it, or is linked to specific tracks. Like the gold track here gives you money income. Um, the white track gives you points income and so on. I really, really like that, that adjustment to the tracks themselves. The game also adds an element, um, and probably the most brain burning element is the addition of books as a resource. And uh, as a neutral resource, as a wild resource, is kind of my favorite way to use the books so far, at least in my first game when I was trying to figure out the ropes for this game, because books also have four different colors to them, and those different colors of books can be spent on different tiles in the game, the innovation tiles. In fact, so that probably isn't called the innovation track because there are innovation tiles in the game. That was a lot to think about in the first game, because whenever you gain a book, you immediately have to decide what color you want that book to be for something that you might spend it on later. I never ended up spending any of my books on innovation tiles uh, because there was another cost associated with it. However, the books also did something that I really liked, and I, I think I would have liked the game even if books had been added simply as a neutral wild resource, or we'll say neutral resource, just called books in general, and that is at the base of the board here. Um, you might remember from Terra Mystica, at the base of the board, there's some things that you can spend power on. They're one-time use things per round. It adds some nice tension to the game because you have the tension of, do I grab a space on the board that I really want? Do I terraform and build there? Or um, do I grab one of these limited spaces down here using power to gain a powerful one-time benefit that I really need for that, that round or that turn or that round, not, not that turn. Um, but in addition to that, they've added these three uh, spaces that are modular. These are tiles on the board that you put. This one says if you spend any two books, you gain six dollars. This one, hard to see with the, the lighting there, but it says if you spend any two books, you gain, what was that one that we had last night? Oh, this one said convert a, a basic building into what was pre previously called a trading house. Now there's a new word for it. And the other random one that we had in this game was um, if you spend one book, you can rotate uh, five power. These were modular. These could be different in, a, in another game, um, but in this game, th these were ours. This gave me something to spend books on throughout the game because I wasn't really using them for the innovation tiles, but it felt really good to have an additional resource in addition to power to spend on some powerful one-time benefits that added attention to the game, but also were good for me at certain times where I really needed those resources and I wasn't producing them uh, through income. Uh, the game has another, a number of other quality of life improvements. The only other one that I'll mention here, because those are probably my, my three favorite, 
is the art on the board this is very specific but the water on the board and my photo does not do it justice but the water is beautiful like it it's it's the most stunning water i think i've seen in pretty much any game it's it's luscious it's beautiful it really brings the board to life in its vibrant colors um so just the the new art on the board and i really enjoyed the art on the original board but there's something about the water on this board that i really really like um so yeah another small improvement to the game that makes a big difference those are my three favorite things about Age of Innovation, those three mechanisms, the, um, the paired, paired factions, the paired uh, asymmetry, the income on the innovation tracks or whatever those tracks are actually called, and the ability to spend wild books, neutral books, on some one-time per round abilities on the board itself. Those are my three favorite things about Age of Innovation so, so far, but I look forward to getting to the table with a variety of other combinations in the future. Let me know your thoughts when you get the chance to play the game or if you have any thoughts about Age of Innovation in general based on what you've heard about it in comparison to Terra Nova, Terra Mystica, and Gaia Project. Thanks.